Have you ever dreamed of living or retiring to a place where the air is clean, the beaches are all around, the lifestyle is relaxed, yet surprisingly affordable and almost tax-free? What if I told you there is a hidden gem with all these characteristics? Stay tuned as we unveil Uruguay, an out-of-the-radar country that might just be your perfect destination. And in the middle of this episode, we will review a compelling reason to sway your decision to make the move. But first, allow me 30 seconds to explain why we came to Uruguay in this episode. I met the hustle and bustle of Sao Paulo. A colleague of mine, Felipe, recently told me about his idea of living elsewhere. It's not easy to raise a family and have a tranquil life in an enormous cyberpunk-like city like Sao Paulo. When I asked what he had in mind, he told me about a place not far from Brazil, yet a world apart regarding tranquility and safety. His eyes would light up as he painted a picture of Uruguay, a country he saw had an escape from the violence and chaos that had become all too familiar in his daily life. And that is how we came to this episode about living and retiring in Uruguay. You will have complete research and first-hand witness of the pros, cons and cost of living. Plus, some highly unexpected facts. But let's start with the positive part. The first is the quality of life. Uruguay's quality of life is reflected in its Human Development Index, a measure that assesses three dimensions, health, education and income. According to the latest data from the UN, Uruguay ranks highly on the HDI, 0.809 points, leaving it in 58th place among 191 nations and above many countries in Latin America. Are we saying that Uruguay is a developed country? Not really, but it's not far either, at least when you compare it to the neighbors. The second pro is the affordable private healthcare. The country is home to high-quality private and medical institutions that offer services at a fraction of the cost compared to US hospitals. For instance, the British Hospital in Montevideo is a renowned institution known for its top-notch medical service and English-speaking staff. A private health plan with full coverage at Estancia Medical costs 3,515 pesos, or less than $90 per month. In the US, a single doctor visit may cost three or four times that. The difference is mind-blowing. The affordable healthcare options in Uruguay contribute to a lower cost of living, making the country a desirable retirement destination, for example. The third pro is the stable political and economic environment. While countries like Argentina, Brazil, Peru and Bolivia are famous for their consecutive leadership changes, impeachments, and even the eventual civil conflicts, Uruguay stands apart in terms of stability. Uruguay's stability is no accident. It has been established through prudent economic policies and a solid judicial system. The country has adopted responsible fiscal and monetary policies, avoiding the unsustainable debt levels and economic crisis common in the region. This has allowed Uruguay to maintain consistent growth rates and attract foreign investment. Additionally, the government has focused on diversifying its industry, once with an economy based on exports of wool and meat. Today, Uruguay is responsible for almost 10% of the international tourism in South America. Many would also mention the climate as a pro. Summers in Uruguay from December to March are warm, with temperatures averaging around 28 degrees Celsius, 82 Fahrenheit, perfect for enjoying the country's beaches and outdoor activities. Winters are mild, with temperatures rarely dropping below 10 degrees Celsius. The last positive aspect may be up for discussion, because it depends to what you are comparing it to. We are talking about the low crime rates. Uruguay's homicide rate is one of the lowest in South America. Here is how it compares to other countries in the region. Uruguay, 8.2 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants per year. This is a number similar to the US, more or less. Brazil, 27.8 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants per year. Colombia, 24.9 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants. Venezuela, 56.8 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants. Of course, if you compare Uruguay to Europe, it will not look that safe but it's far safer than most Latin American countries. But what about the negative aspects? First, and this may look obvious, but 
Uruguay is quite far from American Europe. One of the challenges of retiring Uruguay is its geographical distance from North America and Europe. From London, it takes at least 16 hours to travel to Uruguay, often with at least one stopover. It's a long and often inconvenient trip. This leads us to our next point. Difficulties in visiting family and friends back home. Being far from North America or Europe can make it hard for expats to stay close to their family and friends. Traveling long distance can be tough, especially if you have to visit often, and I tell you that from my own experience. Long flights can tire you out, especially if you're older. You might spend hours waiting for your next flight, deal with delays, or get stuck in airports, and these trips can take a lot of time and money. Another negative aspect of Uruguay is the bureaucracy. Like many Latin American countries, Uruguay has its shares of red tape, which can be frustrating for those accustomed to more efficient systems. Whether it's dealing with property, transactions, utilities, or the healthcare system, expats may find that processes can be slow and require a significant amount of paperwork. And lastly, and for some, this can be a positive thing, but for others, a negative one, is the manana culture. Uruguay, like many other Latin American countries, operates on what is colloquially known as manana culture. The term manana, meaning tomorrow in Spanish, is often used to describe a more relaxed attitude towards time and deadlines. This can be a significant shift for those coming from cultures where punctuality and strict adherence to schedules are the norms. It's not uncommon for appointments to run late or for tasks to take longer than initially anticipated. While this laid-back approach can be part of Uruguay's charm, it can also be a source of frustration for those unaccustomed to it. Now let's review the cost of living in Uruguay. However, before we begin, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Even the most expensive city in Uruguay, Montevideo, has a square meter 50% cheaper than the US average. Let's compare the cost of living in Montevideo in Uruguay and Philadelphia in the US using US dollars for all values. In Montevideo, the average monthly rent for a one-bedroom apartment in the city center or other premium zones is around $760. In contrast, in Philadelphia, the monthly rent for a similar apartment is above $2,000. A taxi trip of around 8 kilometers in Montevideo will cost you $11 or $12. In Philadelphia, it will be three times this price. A nice haircut in Montevideo will cost you less than $15, while in Philadelphia you'll pay at least $40 if you're lucky. You got it, right? So what is your opinion? Do the lower cost of living and pleasant climate of Uruguay compensate for the fact that it's far and expensive to fly there? Let me know in the comment section. I may feature your comment in the next video. There is another South American country even cheaper than Uruguay and way better connected to Europe and North America. If you want to discover more about this place, check the video here at your left.